Good morning. It's Friday. Hello, world. Been a while since we did a 12 step rant here, and it's time. Recently, I came in contact with the mother of my son. Restored my faith in the fact that she's an idiot. She's always been an idiot. And she's going to remain an idiot. She's gone from being an almost liberal person to being a fucking capitalist. Pretty sad. No wonder my son's brain is polluted with shithead ideas. He still wants to become a billionaire. Uh, I laid the case against that as I have many other things. But I see in my uh, son's mother one of the big problems with 12-step programs. The biggest problem being is that it's effective. That's an erroneous belief, it's not. Most people who have the opportunity to go there and do go there, leave. Very small percentage sticks around. And basically it's a cult mentality. Now, I still have friends in that program that I was in, Narcotics Anonymous here in Phoenix, Arizona. I still have friends there. They don't dispute with me over my views because they know me and my history and how well-founded my thinking is, even though they may not agree with it. I don't agree with them. Now, I drink. I'm a medicinal user of cannabis. I don't do either one to excess. If I start to like drinking too much, I stop. Yeah. That means I go days without drinking. It doesn't mean, however, that I don't get a little intoxicated once in a while. And I do. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't become a daily or a semi-weekly habit. Like during the week, three or four times a week. Then it's okay. If it starts to become that kind of a desire, I stop. That you can call that on a bad day harm reduction and on a good day management. I'm going to take this mask off. That does wonders for the beard. Look at that fashion statement. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now that we have this somewhat rearranged, there we go. That was fucked up. I'll edit that out. <laughs> so I saw in her uh, a desire to uh, get back together, which I was neutral about. I wanted to see what she was all about. She wanted to see what I was all about. Well, I think she saw me as a practicing addict. And, uh, you know, that's just more of the cult thinking. Uh, and then... Uh, then we, you know, we had a discussion about Trump, and she doesn't like Trump because he screwed over contractors. Well, there's a lot of disreputable contractors, that's true. I'm not defending Trump at all in this, because you shouldn't screw people over. You should negotiate with them. He just fucked them out of money after they'd done work for him. And uh, people get deserve to get paid for their work unless it's very poorly done and not uh, executed properly. So anyway, I see in her this cult mentality. Uh, she's involved in the board of directors or board of trustees or whatever the fuck we have, a board of directors here in the Arizona Region of Narcotics Anonymous, which is a, a uh, incorporated. It's a, C, uh, it's a C503 or something like that. Or maybe it's not incorporated. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care about that organization anymore. I put 23 years into serving 
that fellowship and that organization. And I gained some valuable leadership and administrative skills in doing it. I learned how to delegate to good people who get things done, who get the right things done. And we always had to fight against this reactionary, libertarian type thinking. And, and that, you know, it becomes about politics and it's really, it's just about administration, fun flow, and arranging to have a good time at a convention. That's really all that whole thing is about, getting literature to the prisons. So we haven't seen lots of people come out of the prisons and stay in the rooms. No. Why? Because the rooms are not very attractive. Why? Because common sense will tell you this isn't the way to beat addiction. Addiction can be beaten. And the people that think that it is a disease and that it's incurable, progressive and fatal, they are beaten by their thinking and their belief system. They're beaten. And until that is abandoned, hopefully they don't have Dunning-Kruger, you know, a severe chronic case of Dunning-Kruger. <laughs> hopefully they don't have that so they can beat it. Like I did. I beat it. I beat the belief that it's unbeatable. It's not. You can overcome addiction. You can change your behavioral patterns because addiction is mainly about behavior. The pathology comes when we've done so much of it, like in the case of the alcoholic who develops cirrhosis of the liver, or the dope fiend who gets hepatitis C from shooting up with people who are not safe to be with. Huh, remind you of something that's going on nowadays? A yeah, little corona yeah, advice? Yeah, if you don't want to get sick, don't hang around with sick people, and that means in their thinking as well. Because the thinking is not a disease, it's viral a lot of times. Thinking is not a disease. Thinking is just a normal process that our brains go through based on the beliefs and based on the filters that we have from the information that we're receiving. That's my take on it. And I don't think anything is actually true except something that's true. There might be reality outside of what we think is reality, an ultimate reality. I don't accept or reject that. There might. I'm saying it's possible. Okay, that's the the very vestiges of science that are left in me. There's not much science left in me, uh, unfortunately. I, I loved it, it was beautiful, but I could see that it wasn't gonna put uh, you know beans on my table. So I had to do what I had to do to live where I wanna live and be with my family. I had to do that. At least in my view, I had to do it. Maybe I didn't have to. I could have moved away and been like the crawling mass of slime that goes back and forth across the country being slaves to their jobs, or being slaves to the idea they can't be a slave to their job, or being slaves to the idea that their affluence is worth more than anything. No, that's not me. And you know what? If you're in the cult of AA or NA or one of the other ah ahs, ah 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 ah, no, then don't do the ah ah na na. Don't do it. Get out of the cult if you can. If you're not in it, don't join it. It's good for a brief stay to get yourself clean, to get yourself off of the substances and develop a new pattern of behavior, which is substance free. And I advocate that for people who need it. There's people who are gonna have to be abstinent permanently. There's people who are gonna be have to be abstinent for quite some time. That's just the way this shit works. So that is a reality. However, there are those of us who can practice harm reduction? There are those of us who can learn to manage our use of substances. I think it's pretty tough to manage the use of heroin uh, because of the lifestyle. Um, even in countries where it's illegal, it, it's more difficult to manage. It can be managed, actually. But I don't know why you'd want to manage something that completely rules you. Same with alcohol. Alcohol is probably the worst. The alcohol and nicotine are the two worst. They'll totally rule your life. Yeah, they'll totally rule your life if you let your habitual use of them debilitate you. Notice my language there, if you let, if you allow that to happen. The important thing to remember for those who are using substances to alter their consciousness, A, B, medicate themselves, C, just like to experience a good time, have, have fun, okay? If you're going to do that, you should learn moderation. You should learn when, oh, hey, that's about as 
That's about as high as I'm going to get. Oh, that's about as much pain relief as I'm going to get. Oh, well, it won't be fun if I do any more of this. So it is about moderation, and it also can be about harm reduction. You know, sometimes harm reduction is the way to beat this. That's how I beat my uh, nicotine tobacco addiction after 40 years of back and forth. I started smoking when I was 10 years old, started chewing tobacco in grade school. You know, I started all this uh, tobacco use, nicotine use stuff. I did realize how addictive, addictive it is. It's very addictive. It's, I, I agree with the old Surgeon General, Everett Koop. Everett Koop told us that he thinks that it's the most addictive substance known. Yeah, known to man. Yeah. And I, from my experience, I agree with that because it was the hardest one to kick. I kicked Coke, I kicked alcohol, I kicked everything, you know, and didn't have a desire for it anymore and, you know, all of that. Like, you know, I like to have a drink. But when I see myself desiring it too much, I don't have one. Because I know the tendency to form a new addiction pattern. Now, some people think that's Russian roulette. No, it's not. Not if you have the right mindset. If you have made a decision and stick by your decision not to get too fucked up or not to get fucked up when you feel like getting fucked up, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Sometimes the best time with it is to relax with any of it. My use is strictly medicinal. I use it to, to uh, go to sleep and sleep pain-free and wake up pain-free. And that's what it does for me. And, you know, I keep my consciousness clear when I'm working. I don't uh, take anything when I'm working. I go days without taking th anything except for the cannabis. I use pretty much about six times a week. Uh, it is medicinal for me though it's not you know uh, smoke a joint and watch the newest movie or go to the or watch the newest concert or music videos even though you hear some nice instrumental black metal in the background here yeah yeah so my emphasis here is if you have a habitual drug use problem which is making your life problematic, I think it's a very good idea to stop. And you can use uh, the 12-step program as a peer support crutch for a while. If you have a rational mind and have common sense, you're not going to adopt the cult thinking, which is all this God crap. Because the steps are rife with shit that fucks you up. You know, they'll tell you what's got to fuck you up to get you better, and then you're better because you're not fucked up anymore. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's that's what they call stinking thinking. Their thinking is very much a stinking set of beliefs. Yeah. So let's do a couple of refutations here while well, i got a couple of minutes left that I'm allowing myself. Number one is... We did cover it in part. It's not progressive. It's not incurable. And it doesn't have to be fatal. However, the first premise, which is wrong, is that addiction is a disease. I'm fairly sure from all the information I've collected and over 30 years experience <coughs> dealing with myself and other people afflicted with addiction, despite what the the intake counselor tells me, who tells me it's a, it is a disease and he doesn't know because he doesn't have a biomedical background. He doesn't have a background in physiological chemistry or endocrinology or physiology or pathology. He doesn't have a background in that. And I don't care if he's been doing that fucking job for 20 years. He's not an expert. All he sees is like the cops, problem. He sees problem. And he thinks that the way to fix it is through the conventional means now, which is 12-step program, possibly uh, drug therapy if the person has a mental disorder besides addiction, uh, and counseling. Okay, so that can be effective. All three of those, I think the greatest studies on those that have any plausibility are about 33%. That's pretty good. However, I don't think it's significantly different from 29% who quit on their own with no help like I did with cigarettes. And I did it through harm reduction. That's my second, because 
If there's no disease, there's no progression. There can be a progression in self-destructive behavior, but that's not a disease. That's a mental disorder, and that can be cured in most. Over 95% of the cases, in my experience, can be permanently cured if a new mindset is adopted, which does not allow the person to return to addictive patterns. It's a constant struggle, but once the root of those patterns is broken and things are reframed into a healthy pattern, it, there's, there's nothing to worry about. And it's not a disease. There's no pathology that you catch. It's not contagious, uh, except socially to some extent. It's not uh, a virus. It's not a bacteria. It's a choice. Okay. So that, and the fatality, it doesn't have to be fatal. You can manage it, or you can be abstinent. I'm not against abstinence. I'm, abstinence is a very effective strategy to overcome addiction. And you don't have to be a moderate user. <clears throat> you don't have to practice harm reduction. You can have abstinence. Abstinence is a great insurance program. Because if you don't use, you won't overdose. And if you don't overdose, you won't die. And it's easier to do it that way than trying to make the shot the right dose. <coughs> Excuse me, I got allergies. Okay, guys. So, that kills the disease concept right there. Let's talk about harm reduction. Good thing. Good thing. That's how I quit smoking after 40 years of, of totally intense struggle. It's been 15 years now. <clears throat> and I had the urge to smoke. Yesterday, I had a cue. I saw a pack of one of my favorite brands of cigarettes. I saw that. So what did I do? I dealt with it on the spot. <clears throat> you know what happens to you when you smoke? Yeah, do you like it? No. Does it, the whole idea of it is very appealing to my two fingers and to my mouth. Very appealing. I think I'd rather eat pussy, though. Anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's choice. I chose not to open that box of cigarettes that my friend across the street left here. I chose not to open it. Choice. And that's what they teach you in the program that's good. You can choose to stay clean. Yes, you can. You can choose not to take that second drink. You can choose not to smoke so much pot that it makes your life unmanageable. And if you do choose those strategies, you're not going to develop an addiction pattern. You're not. In fact, you're going to reinforce your pattern of moderation or abstinence. Right? Isn't that what we learned? That was a useful thing to take away. But then there was a bunch of unuseful, actually harmful bullshit. Harmful beliefs and thinking. This whole God thing. <clears throat> First of all, First of all, if you're really rational, if you're if you're rational, there is no God like they're talking about. Now, what they do though is is kind of cool because on a magical level, it's cool because they make up an an egregore or an entity. They make up their own personal God. Now, some people share the same God that they make up. A God of their understanding is what they call it. So that's the egregore. It's a God of our understanding. Well, there's so many different understandings of that God that it either is this really huge egregore, okay, which is an entity which is created by a group of individuals for uh, achieving certain results, usually protection against the harm of addiction, which it's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, to have a protective entity like that, that's not a bad thing. However, there's been too many other things in jazz. Sorry about the shakiness there. It's a, uh, tremors from too many car accidents. Yeah, that's right. And most of those car accidents were when I wasn't taking anything. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, that, that brings us right back to the harm reduction thing, which harm reduction is great, okay? And it may be the way that you have to get yourself out of an addiction pattern. However, I recommend that once you get things down to a bare minimum, become abstinent for a while, even if it's just a year or whatever. It's good. You know, abstinence is good. I did it for 30 years. 
I ought to know. It has a lot of benefits. However, it is not for most people. And this is what I found out. I'm not an addict. I overcame my addiction. It was a behavioral problem, which had some pretty serious consequences. I overcame it. I don't have those consequences anymore. I don't have that kind of thinking that I did in those days because I overcame a lot of depression and anxiety due to unresolved grief. And that took about, whew, I think it was about 10 years to really extinguish a lot of that. And then I went through a bunch of personal trials and tribulations like being unemployed and homeless and, you know, different things that I had broke and being over 40 and having that, you know, causing that to happen to myself, which I did. I, you know, I take responsibility for it. So, as we move through all this, and we look at the lies of the program, you know, progressively incurable, fatal, no, it doesn't have to be fatal, it's not a disease, so it's not incurable or progressive, okay, uh, uh, complete abstinence is the only way, no, that's not true, that's true for some, some things are correct for some people, all things are correct for all people, unless all things include all things, right? So moving moving forward through this uh, into the next part of this 12-step nonsense, when people develop these hardcore attitudes of, oh, now, in the case of my, of my ex there, it's really funny because she is recently getting over the death of this man that she thought was this beautiful, wonderful man based on her preferences who died from a drug overdose. It wasn't accidental. The guy was a fucking using, uh, he was using addict. He had a he had a, a, a drug abuse problem. Otherwise, he wouldn't have OD'd, right? Doesn't mean he, what he had was incurable, but it sure did wind up fatal. So maybe her reaction to me is a knee-jerk reaction based on him, and she didn't want to get herself emotionally submerged into all that again. And with me, there's no emotional submersion going on. It's either... You want to get together, enjoy each other's company? Okay, no, okay, that's okay. I'm okay with it, you know, I'm okay. I had to understand it because it was a little, I thought she was more open-minded than that. And that was my, that was my miscue and expectations. At any rate, I am so glad, I'm so grateful that I chose to leave the 12-step program of Narcotics Anonymous and uh, to leave the idiocy that I saw in those meetings. Now, there were some sane, rational people, and a lot of them didn't come around too much anymore. Okay, there were some, and some loving and caring people, yes, who were fairly open-minded enough to, to uh, accept the fact that a lot of people don't buy into this whole thing. That we don't have to, that we can have a couple drinks, that we can smoke a couple of joints, that we can do that, and we don't have to let it rule our lives. And that's the key. If it's ruling your life, probably better stop. If it's not, then, you know, practice harm reduction or practice uh, moderation. And those are two words you're not going to find in that program because the program is about complete abstinence. So, therefore, it is not the program for me and the majority. Right. The majority of people, it doesn't meet their needs. However, for you to tell me, work the steps or die, motherfucker, well... Try to make me work the steps, and we'll see who dies from that wasted effort, not from me enacting violence. So, you know, keep your fanatical opinions, 12-steppers, to yourself. They're not valid here. Sometimes you guys spew out some facts, but if you were fact-based and rational, you wouldn't be in the program, right? Right? And you would be like so many of us, the majority of us, who left and found a better way of life without the use of the program. I can go through every step and, and show you where they're wrong. I only have to go through one, the first step, because that's the basis for the other 11, right? Then I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish on this. We admitted we were powerless over our addiction and that our lives had become unmanageable. Okay. The admission of powerlessness is a surrender. However, it's a bad surrender. It's a 
unconditional white flag surrender. It's a go ahead and take my head. No, it's not a choice to live. It's a choice to continue the self-acceptance of defeat. So where do we go wrong there? Well, the powerlessness is not necessary. The second part's good. Hey, I can't control this behavioral pattern, so I need to stop it. That That's great. That actually works. Because when we have a behavioral pattern, which is self-destructive, which could result in our death or our permanent disability, then isn't the rational, common sense action to stop? Of course. And then maybe after that and some reflection, get maybe get some outside help. It might work if you have an emotional problem that's causing you to practice your disorder. And that's true with many people. Get that help. Stop. Stay stopped for a while. And then you can ease back into moderation. This has been, with, been done with great success in Europe. Especially in Scandinavia where they work with people that are drinking. They have a lower incidence of alcoholism because of it, I believe. I could be wrong. could be also that they have a real high uh, level of, uh, of the uh, enzyme uh, which breaks down alcohol, alcohol dehydrogenase. So if they have a, a real high amount of that in their liver, well, they're going to process alcohol faster, they're not going to stay drunk as long. And that becomes easier to control. Now, if we don't have a high level of that, we really have to watch the drinking. We might not be able to handle it and be healthy. So maybe that's a good reflection. But we don't. I, I don't know of any tests. There probably are some where we could, you know, test the blood and find out how much alcohol dehydrogenase that we have. It's probably more of a liver biopsy if there is such a thing. I don't know of it. I'm not going to research it. Really don't care. Um, I have a high enough tolerance to keep my head and say, hey, that's enough. Stop. So we're not really powerless. We have the ability to choose whatever path we want to take, whether that's towards abstinence and then moderation or towards moderation and harm reduction. That choice is there. So this is a completely erroneous belief. And I refute all of you bastards that say that this is the only way out for some people. No, it's not. They don't have to be in the program to find and practice abstinence if that's what they need. And that's what the determination is. Okay, this person's out of control. They have to stop until they can figure out what they're going to do. They don't do it that way. Well, I think in the health systems, they have to do it that way. I think that might be part of their regulations. So right there, we've blown the first step out of the water. You're not powerless, you have a choice. Period. That kills the whole thing. The whole thing's dead after that. Now, if you want to be religious and believe in a god or gods or whatever type of outside spirituality, that's your business. And that's okay. If that gives you strength, if that keeps you sane, then, you know, I don't dispute it anyway. I, you know, as long as you don't try to push a shit on me, I don't believe it. I'm pretty much a across-the-board atheist. That doesn't mean I don't think that there isn't great creative forces in the universe, sentient forces. Now, I do believe that. I do think that that is entirely possible. We have certain things like that here on this planet. However, that doesn't mean there's some supreme being out there that's running the show. I don't believe in that nonsense. I, I think that's nonsense. And uh, maybe there is some kind of ultimate reality process going on and if there is I don't think there's God, anyone maybe maybe a teeny tiny portion of portion of those who ever live who really know what the ultimate reality is I don't think that's in our purview I agree with dr. Donald Hoffman on that there might be an ultimate reality but our reality is about evolution and surviving and perpetuating the species so I've already reproduced inadvertently and much to my chagrin. So I guess that makes me successful as a human in evolution. I, I reproduced and that offspring reproduced. So, and those offspring will probably reproduce unless the world, unless humanity dies off, which is a distinct possibility of our extinction. 
that ends my uh, uh, rant on 12-step programs for the day. The program is erroneous from step one, so its only use is for uh, peer recognition and support. <clears throat> and that support depends upon uh, the lack of fanaticism uh, in those supporters and their rationality and just the pure love and care that comes even from family, excuse me. <coughs> that creamer does that to me. I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend. Make it so, because you do, we do. We can choose to have a great time sitting alone, reading, building a puzzle, watching something uh, on video that's helpful. Just going crazy on our own, being safe, staying safe. I'm not going to touch the mask thing because people have really gotten out of line. About 20% of people are totally fucked up in the head over the whole mask thing. Totally fucked up in the head. They reduced it to that bullshit libertarian liberty freedom position, which is erroneous. Because there's one fact. If you endanger the safety of others because you won't take safety precautions, you are putting people at risk. And that's immoral. That's wrong. And in some cases, it becomes criminal when it's willful. I leave you with that. I'm not going to tell you to wear a mask or not wear a mask. I'm going to tell you, the facts are out there. Read them. They're constantly evolving like human neuroconsciousness. Constantly evolving. Do your neuroplasticity exercises and meditate, please. Yes. Let's stay focused. Let's stay smart. Let's have more common sense. Let's know. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. There's a lot of shit on that. Learn critical thinking. I'm still learning it. I'm no expert at it. And you really cannot have debates without a table and index cards or a tablet and computer and all your facts lined up to present a case on a predetermined topic. That if you don't have that, you don't have a debate. You have rhetoric. And that's what this is. This is rhetoric. So have a great weekend. And when you think, think, hey, we wo, 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 hey, we wo.